Have you ever wondered how to make the image of any camera, even your phone, look like it shot on a high-end setup? In this video, I'm going to show you how to get that beautiful cinematic look with just a simple trick. And no, you don't need expensive gear for this. So this is a lighting scenario you'd usually start with. You're just shooting in a room with just ambient light. In this room, I only have one window as my light source, and that's it. No other lights are turned on at this moment. There is clearly not enough light in this room. Also because of my own fault, because I painted the walls almost black. It's like a dark bluish tint. So to brighten up your image, you'd usually have to increase your ISO. But the downside of that is that you'll increase some noise in your footage as well. Overall, this image looks quite boring and stale. So right now I added this harsh light source right in front of me. But as you can see, the background is way too dark and the light really isn't flattering on my face. So this is the light source with the reflector dish. It was only at 1% and it was already way too bright. In most cases, we want our light source to be as soft as possible. Not always, but that's for another video. So now it's time to fix this unflattering light. So at this moment, we just had this huge softbox right in front of me. We can do this by adding a softbox, a large white bed sheet, or by adding muslin right in front of your light source. A bed sheet or muslin is going to make the light source even softer because the light is going to spread over the entire fabric and it's also going to be cheaper. And it probably would take up a lot less space because this softbox right here is a 90 centimeter diameter softbox and it's actually too big for this room. So that can get quite annoying. And even though the lighting is improved a lot, we still want this kind of 3D effect. We can achieve this effect by placing the light in a 90 degree angle right in front of you and make sure that the light is slightly higher than you. So there are two golden rules for soft flattering lighting. The bigger the diffusion and the closer your light source is near your subject, the softer the light is going to be. And if you want even a more dramatic lighting effect, you can put your light right next to you and then shoot from the shadow side from your face. Okay, so we've lit ourselves up and we already look way better. But just look at this background. The background really sucks and the image still feels flat even though I actually pop out of the image way more. So we need to fix this. Just look at this difference. Insane, right? The only thing that we did is add some practicals in our background. So I have these pretty cool RGB tube lights and you can be really creative with them because you can turn them like this. This small desk light right here and my computer screen help improve the image a lot as well. And the cool thing about RGB lights is that depending on the mood that you want to convey in your video, you can change the color to suit that mood. So the color red, for example, stands for danger, passion, excitement, love. The color green stands for nature, growth, health. And the color blue stands for calm, peace, trust, stability. So even though your key light is super important, it's not the most important. I would say that it's a 50-50 split between lighting yourself up properly and having a cool background and having cool lights in the background. To separate us even more from the background, there is one more light that we can add. So the extra light we added right here is a rim light. And this kind of light will separate us even more from the background because we have this little splash of light hitting our shoulder right here and my left side of the face. And I made sure that this light was on the cooler Kelvin range because the background is pretty orange and pretty warm. So this gives some nice and cool color contrast to your image. You could use a super cheap light source for this and the light source can even be harsh. It doesn't matter that much for this type of lighting. So this is our little rim light right here. And another tip is to, if you don't have super strong and powerful lights, shut down your blinds if that's possible because the more light control you have, the better. And you don't want to compete with natural lighting that's changing all the time. So this is what the image looks with the blinds almost completely down. So now we've made our image 10 times better by just improving our lighting. And even though I have some more expensive lights and I didn't have some cheaper lights to show you, you can do everything I did right here with cheaper lights as well. Amazon has a lot of dope and cheap lights that you can use for your videos and even your photos. But just make sure that whenever you're buying a key light that it's at least 60 watts of power. And if you have the extra budget, it would also be nice to be able to change the white balance of your lighting. If you don't have the money to afford more expensive lights, keep all the principles in mind that I told you about and your image will look 
10 times better as well. We aren't done yet because there are other things to improve as well. Try to sit a bit further away from your background because this is going to add more separation and depth to your image. And if you want to add even more separation in your image, you can get closer to the camera like this. Or if you have a camera with interchangeable lenses, make sure that you shoot at an f-stop of like f2.8, f2, f1.4, the lowest you can get, or shoot at a higher focal length. Because if you're shooting at an 85 millimeter focal length compared to a 35 millimeter focal length, the 85 is usually going to have way more depth and compression compared to the 35 millimeter. Even though your 35 millimeter lens could be an f1.4 and your 85 millimeter an f4. But too much blur can be distracting because sometimes you want to be able to see the entire context of your image and what's happening in the background. Another very important thing is your white balance. My white balance at this moment is just all over the place and it's very hard or sometimes even impossible to fix this in post. When you're shooting indoors, it's usually fine to shoot in auto white balance because the lighting in your scene is not going to change too much, especially if you're doing talking head videos like this. But if you know, however, that the lighting circumstances are going to change a lot, then it is recommended to dial in your white balance manually. When you're shooting outdoors in daylight, then your white balance should be around 5,500 Kelvin. Or indoors, it's around 3,000 to 4,000. But anyways, any modern camera is pretty good at doing auto white balance these days. And it usually also has some presets that will help you set the right white balance for the right moment. For example, for a cloudy day, for a sunny day, when you're indoors. To prevent as much noise in your footage as possible, try to shoot in the native ISO of your camera. On my iPhone, for example, that's the lowest amount. And on my Sony a7C2, that's 800 and 3200. So I'm doing everything I possibly can to shoot at these ISO levels because then your image is going to look the best. When you're shooting on an iPhone, try to use some kind of third party apps that will give you full manual control over the camera settings of your phone. That's what I'm doing right now as well. I'm using the Kino app and it's really great. You can apply some grades on your footage already and it's just a very good app. If you want to keep your footage more natural and less choppy like in the cinemas, then you have to keep two settings in mind. Your shutter speed and your frame rate. For natural looking motion blur in your videos, you should match your shutter speed to double your frame rate. So if you're shooting at 25 frames per second, you want your shutter speed to be 1 over 50th of a second. This keeps movement smooth and less harsh and less choppy. When you don't follow this rule, for example, and you wave your hand, then everything is going to be either super blurry if the shutter speed is too low or super choppy if the shutter speed is too high. So this is a shutter speed of 1 over 200 seconds. And as you can see, my hand should be pretty much in focus all the time. So really not natural. I'm also shooting at a pretty high ISO, so the image is going to be worse as well. But when you dial in these kind of settings, especially when you're shooting outside, your image will probably be too bright. And that's when you have to use something like this. This is a variable ND filter. And these are basically sunglasses for your camera so that you can dial in specific settings without your image getting too bright. On my iPhone, for example, I don't care about it that much because I just want this to be a tool that's quick and easy to grab. But whenever I'm shooting on my camera, I don't shoot any videos without a VND and keeping my shutter speed double the frame rate. The icing on top of the cake of everything of our entire image is color grading. If your camera allows for it, try to shoot in log. This is like a lighter variation than shooting in raw when shooting video or when shooting photos, for example. It allows you to capture way more dynamic range and it will also get you the most bit depth out of your camera so you will have the most flexibility to play around with the colors and the contrast and everything in your image. If you don't have this feature on your camera, don't worry about it too much because you can still play around with your colors. But if you don't have a camera that shoots log yet, I would highly recommend you to get the iPhone 15 Pro or the 16 Pro if you don't have the money to buy like a real professional camera. And by the way, if you're enjoying these color gates, you can get my LUTs or DaVinci Resolve power grades in the link in the description below. And then you can get similar color grades like me. And honestly, it's just amazing what kind of colors you can get out of phones 
like the iPhone these days. There is a saying that what you hear is more important than what you see in the filmmaking industry. And if you think about it, it's pretty much true because imagine if you'd watch a horror movie without any sound effects and sounds in general. That would just be boring and you wouldn't get the jump scare that you're getting right now. So audio plays a huge role and you don't need to spend a lot of money to get major improvements. So my audio in this video came entirely from my iPhone and my iPhone is like one meters away from me. Even though it's decent, we can make it better. Every video editor nowadays, such as Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve and so on, has a feature called voice isolation. And what this does is that it will remove a lot of the echo that you have in your room. So that's a very good feature. This is this video shot without the voice isolation feature. And this is talking piece with the voice isolation feature. So the difference is huge, right? So right now I'm shooting on a Sony a7C II because I want to show you something or better, let you hear something. The microphones of the iPhone are so good nowadays that if you have an additional camera that you can use your iPhone as a mic. And a pro tip, put your sock over your iPhone's mics and then you're going to decrease the amount of pops, the harsh pops and the S tone that you're going to get in your voice recording. Oops, the battery died of my light, whatever. And then afterwards you could sync up the audio of your voice note on your iPhone to the one on your camera and then you're going to have very, very good audio. And unless you're using a left mic, the golden rule is the closer your mic is towards the source, the better the audio is going to be. I mean, not like this, because then it's just going to sound not so good. This is more for like podcast mic, for example, but like at a pretty reasonable distance, because if I would hold my mic right here, for example, like right next to the camera, then the audio is not going to be that good either. So this is what my usual audio setup would look like. I have this lav mic right here, and I would put it right here at my chest level underneath my jacket. And then I'm going to have crystal clear audio. And this is a pretty cheap mic. It's a lav mic from DJI that costs 39 euros. But I'm actually pairing it with the DJI Mic 2, which is a bit more expensive, but, but this combination gives you a super crystal clear wireless audio solution that you almost can't beat, especially at this price point. So with just a few adjustments to your lighting, your audio and your camera settings, you can make your videos look way more professional. And at this moment, it may seem that you need like a lot of gear for this, but trust me, you don't need all that I have. I saved up for years to be able to purchase this or I got some brand deals that sent me lights. But for like 100 to 200 euros or dollars, you can get a pretty good mic setup, a pretty good lighting setup and some nice background lighting, for example. And that's everything you need to improve your videos. And whether you're shooting on a smartphone or on a camera, the principles remain the same. So now you have the baggage to shoot nice videos indoors. But what about the outdoors? Let me know in the comments down below if you would like to get some tips and tricks on how to shoot nice footage on any camera outdoors.